Hello everybody, thank you for watching. This is our 7.6 video, Introduction to the Mole. In this video, we're going to describe how Avogadro's number is used to count the number of particles of any substance. Let's start by talking about what is a mole. We know a mole could be these weird looking animals. A mole could also be a skin growth. It could also be a undercover informant. A mole could also be this type of sauce produced mole. A moles are also these horrendous looking things, a naked mole rat. Moles can also be this type of cricket. It's called a mole cricket. But in chemistry, we like to say a mole is a really, 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 really big number. How big is a mole? A mole is 602-000-000, all these zeros. Ultimately, when you change this to scientific notation, it is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. That is 602 hexillion. So who came up with this nonsense? There was this Italian scientist called Amedio Avogadro, he looked something like this. He came up with this number called 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, which we now know is a mole, or sometimes we like to say it's Avogadro's number. So how can we use a mole in chemistry? And what does it even mean? Let's relate this to something that we already know. So we know we like to say a dozen all the time. And if you remember, a dozen is just 12 things, and that those things could be anything. When you're talking about a mole, you want to think of it as 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd things that it could be. It's just a way to represent a specific number. So if we wanted to talk about a mole of pencils, we can say we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd pencils. We can have a mole of jelly beans. We can have a mole of donuts, which is super crazy. Or we can even have a mole of carbon atoms. Regardless, those things in our mole can be replaced with multiple um, things. In chemistry, we like to talk about atoms, particles, and even molecules. Um, if you take a look at carbon atoms, a mole of carbon atoms, because atoms are so super tiny, they're so super small that they can actually fit in a really small dish. So the overall gist of this whole mole nonsense is 602 hexillion, we obviously know that that's a giant number, but atoms are so tiny that a mole of atoms really isn't that big. How can we use a mole in chemistry? Well, we can use moles in different conversions. We can make conversion factors about them. So what we're going to do is we're going to relate a dozen, which is 12 things, and a mole to kind of show the relationship. So if you wanted to make a conversion factor between a dozen, you could say one dozen equals 12 things. Or you could say 12 things equals one dozen. When talking about a mole, you could say one mole equals 602 times 10 to the 23rd things, or you could flip that around and say 602 times 10 to the 23rd things equals one mole. These are the variations of conversion factors you could use in order to solve mole problems. So let's take a look at a couple practice problems. So let's take a look at 1A. It says the average egg truck has 52,000 eggs. We want to figure out how many dozen of eggs this is. So we always want to start with the number that's given in the problem, 52,000 eggs. We want eggs to cancel. So what we can do is we can use this conversion factor and replace things with eggs. When we do that, we can see that eggs are going to cancel and ultimately our answer is going to end up in dozen. When we do the math and take a look at sig figs, you can see that our final answer is going to be 4,300 eggs. And that is the correct unit that we want because it's asking you how many dozen of eggs is this. 
If you take a look at 1B, it says the average roll of aluminum foil has 4.76 times 10 to the 23rd aluminum atoms. We want to figure out how many moles of aluminum atoms this is. So we start with the number that's given in the problem. Our atoms now becomes our things. So we're using this conversion factor and replacing things with aluminum atoms. When we do that, aluminum atoms are going to cancel and our answer is going to be in moles. You're going to do the math and divide and take a look at sig figs and you can see that our final answer is going to be 79.1 moles. Let's take a look at another problem. 2A says a grocery store usually carries 50 dozen eggs at a time. How many eggs does a grocery store usually have? We're going to start with 50 dozen. We know in one dozen there are 12 eggs. We're going to cancel out dozen and we're going to get a final answer that has one sig fig of 600 eggs. When we relate that to a chemistry problem, we have an 8 ounce of water has 12.45 moles of H2O molecules. How many molecules is this? We're going to start with the number that's in the problem. Then we want moles to cancel, therefore we need to use this conversion factor. We are going to replace things with molecules. When we do that, moles are going to cancel and our answer is going to be 4 sig figs, which is going to be 7.495 times 10 to the 24 molecules. What I want you to do now is pause this video and try these two example problems on your own. Then come back to see if you have the correct answers. Here are the answers to question 3 and 4 on your practice problem sheet. Hopefully 3 has 3 sig figs and question number 4 has a total number of 4 sig figs. What we're going to talk about now are some harder problems. So question number five says, how many atoms of hydrogen are in three moles of H2O? In this problem, it's giving us three moles of H2O. We want to get to atoms of just hydrogen. So there's this thing called a mole to mole ratio. In this compound right here, for every two moles of H2, there's one mole of this entire compound. So this is called a multimole ratio. For H2, that comes from, the two moles comes from the little subscript right over here. So when we do that, moles of H2O cancel, and our answer right now is in moles of H2. We want our answer to be in atoms of hydrogen. So what we're going to have to do is use Avogadro's number and say that for every one mole of H2, which is hydrogen, we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of hydrogen. Moles of hydrogen are going to cancel, and our answer now is in atoms of hydrogen, and that's what we want. When you divide and do the math, we need one sig fig, so your final answer is going to be 4 times 10 to the 24 atoms of H2, which is the same thing as atoms of hydrogen. The last problem is talking about how many total atoms are there in 2.12 moles of propane. So we want to start with propane and we're going to start with 2.12 moles because that's what's given to us in the problem. What we're going to do is we're going to change our number of moles into molecules of propane, right? And what we need to do is cancel out our moles. Right now our answer is in molecules. We want to figure out how many total atoms there are. And you need to know the difference between molecules and atoms in order to solve this problem. So if you take a look, we have this conversion factor that says for every one molecule of propane, we have 11 total atoms. And that 11 total atoms comes from these subscripts right over here. We have three carbons and eight hydrogens. That's a total of 11 atoms. When we use that conversion, molecules of propane are going to cancel and our final answer is in atoms of propane. You're going to do the math and divide. We need a total number of three sig figs, so your final answer is going to be 1.40 times 10 to the 25 atoms of propane. And that concludes our video for today. Thank you for watching.